Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis, Hermanos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 64 for the manual of percutaneous coronary intervention. This is a case illustrating some of the challenges treating balloon uncrossable lesions. The patient was a woman with previous coronary bypass with bilateral IMA grafts. There was a lima to LAD and a lima to the right coronary artery. She had undergone standing of the circumflex as well as the RCA two years prior and now presented with recurrent angina. In patients with previous bypass, especially those with bilateral IMAs, the femoral axis actually has the advantage. It facilitates engagement of both grafts compared to radial, reducing the radiation dose and the contrast dose. Diagnostic angiography showed no significant disease on the circumflex. The LAD was a CTO, as known from before. The right coronary artery had a high, high-grade lesion in the mid-segment, but there was some undergrade penetration of contrast. The lima was normal, supplying the left anterior descending artery. And uh, the lima was also patent. However, there was an area of haziness at the touchdown to the distal right coronary artery. And uh, this was challenging to see but this appeared to be the culprit lesion right at the touchdown of the RIMA graft. So the next question is what to do. The culprit seems to be that uh, RIMA touchdown and the patient does have significant lesion in the native right coronary artery. If this was a saphenous vein graft instead of a RIMA, one could argue that opening the native is clearly the better way to go. However, the RIMA grafts do have excellent patency so our thought here was that recanalizing that lesion would give uh, good results. That was therefore our target lesion. We had uh, some difficulty engaging the graft with the diagnostic catheters. That's why we decided to use the guide wire exchange technique for inserting the guide catheter. So this is the diagnostic catheter through which we advanced a supportive wire the Grand Slam in this particular case that was 300 centimeters long. Over this wire we removed the diagnostic catheter leaving the supportive wire in place and then using this same rail we were able to advance uh, a IMA guide catheter into the origin of the Rima graft. We then used a Sion Blue workhorse guide wire trying to wire however we did have significant difficulty advancing the wire through that lesion and in the process, the patient developed significant inferior ST segment elevation. So, highly warning sign, we stopped and the STs came back to baseline. But we decided to not uh, try to persist on treating the RIMA anastomosis. Instead, we decided now to switch to the native right coronary artery. We wired relatively easily using a turnpike spiral microcatheter as well as a workhorse on blue guide wire. But then no balloon would go through, the turnpike would not go through. So we're here in an example of a balloon uncrossable lesion that can be treated sequentially either through modifying the lesion or getting extra support. So the first step in general is to use a small balloon or even rupture the balloon, the so-called grenadoplasty. Moving on to additional treatments, different microcatheters, the wire cutting technique if you can get a second wire through or getting more support either with a guide extension or an anchor balloon. If this doesn't work, go to the third line, which is using laser or atherectomy. And finally, if nothing works, go to the fourth line, use of subintimal crossing techniques and crossing that balloon uncrossable segment of the vessel. So we start with uh, the smallest balloon, specifically at Subfire Pro, which is the lowest profile balloon available in the US right now, 1.0. Unfortunately, it didn't cross. We tried it with a threader that also didn't cross and several 1.5 balloons. Despite doing grenadoplasty, we were unable to cross the lesion. Um, we then tried with the laser and despite multiple passes, we were also unable to cross. We increased the support by using a six French trap liner that reached almost all the way to that uh, lesion. But once again, tried several balloons, tried the laser, we were unable to cross this uh, segment of the lesion and then we tried the turnpike gold that is a microcatheter designed for screwing into the lesion and modifying however this one also could not cross through this lesion 
So now we've gone essentially throughout the algorithm all the way through laser, and the next step is a therectomy. However, to do a therectomy, we need to replace the workhorse wire 0.014 inch for the atherectomy wires that are smaller, 0.09 or 0.12. And uh, this can be tricky, so what we did is we advanced the microcatheter, a Kerber microcatheter, all the way as far down as it would go. And then uh, we did um, uh, remove the workhorse uh, guide wire after we had done that. And then through this wedged, essentially, microcatheter, we were able to advance a Viper wire that went down into the distal true lumen. So this is an example that although we could not advance the microcatheter through the lesion by having it wedged as far as possible, we were then able to advance the atherectomy wire down the lesion. We did multiple passes with uh, orbital atherectomy, but unfortunately, once again, we were unable to cross the lesion. Then we decided that maybe rotablator might be better, so we repeated the process. We advanced again the microcatheter all the way in the lesion, but unfortunately this time we had potentially disrupted the lesion and we were unable to exchange for the rota wire. The rota wire actually bundled up into the lesion, so could not deliver it any further. At this point we decided to stop given the lack of progress. The patient was just pain-free, did not have any EKG changes or ST segment changes, therefore we decided to stop and have her come back in a few weeks for another attempt. Several lessons from this case. The first one is about treatment targets. In a patient like this who has a culprit in the RIMA touchdown, so we treat that first the native coronary artery. is debatable, but given the excellent long-term patency of IMA, um, of the IMA grafts, treating either way is reasonable. The second, we don't know for sure what caused the ST elevation, but it is known that going through tortuosity on the IMA might straighten it and cause ischemia, and that might have been part of the reason for the ST segment elevation that was transiently seen during the procedure. Although, yeah, most likely what happened is, is uh, trying to affect the lesion distally that appear to be fairly hazy and eccentric. The third is having an algorithm for approaching balloon and crossable lesions that start from the simpler steps, smaller balloons, builds up to more aggressive steps, guide catheter extensions, different balloons and microcatheters, then goes to laser atherectomy and finally goes to subintimal techniques which were not used in this case. Fourth, we also illustrate how one can use a deeply engaged microcatheter into the uncrossable lesion to successfully exchange the 0.014 guide wire for the atherectomy wire. And finally, this is another example where when things don't seem to work, especially if the patient is stable, it may be best to just stop and come back another day for a repeat attempt. Thank you.